Hi, this is Maro, and today we will start a group of videos about functions. We will talk about functions in general. The parent functions, how do we recognize a function when we see its graph? We're going to be talking about the domains and range of functions. We're going to be talking about how to transform functions, operations on functions, inverse functions. It's going to be a group of videos that makes you understand the relation between the function and how it transforms, how it reflects, how it shifts, domain, range, how to perform operations between more than one function. And by the end of this group of videos, you will have a better understanding of different types of functions. In this specific video we're going to talk about today, we are going to focus on parent functions, different types of functions, so you can recognize them when you see them, and the domain and range, and we will know what does it mean to write a function in function notation. So let's start. We will start with parent functions. Now, as you can see here, we have six different functions, and each one of them is a parent function. What do I mean by parent function? This is the function in its basic form, without any kind of transformation. Now, this is a linear function. A linear function is f of x equal to x. What does f of x mean? Well, f of x, it's basically naming the function. f is the function in the variable x, and it's equal to x. What does that mean? So if x here is equal to 1, f of x is going to be equal to 1. If x is equal to 2, f of x is going to be equal to 2, and so on. So the function, instead of naming the function y equals x, the same way we do it when we write an equation. No, we name it f of x equal to x. And not every time we're going to call it f of x. It could be f of x, g of x, h of x. It does not matter. It's just a different name for a function. So the first function we have here is the linear function. Now, I want to discuss with you two things, the domain and the range. What does that mean? Now, domain is all possible values of the input. The input is x. What do you mean by the input? Now, for any function whatsoever, I'm going to put in an input, a value of x, perform the operation, and what comes out, the value of y, is the output. So, if I say f of x is equal to x, when x is equal to 1, when 1 here is the input, I'm going to write here 1, then comes out the output. Okay, so the input is the values of x. The output are the values of y. So when I talk about the domain of any function, the domain is the values of the input. Now, in a linear function, the domain here is represented by all real numbers, like I can move on from 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. The line will extend, and there will be a representation on the line for each of those values. Like 1 has a representation of the line. If I go up here, I will find that 1 has a representation on the line. There is a point here where x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 1. 2 has a representation on the line. There is a point here when x is equal to 2 and y is equal to 2 and so on. As we move on, there are representations of all values of x on the graph we have. So the domain here is from negative infinity to infinity, which means all numbers, all real numbers, starting from negative infinity until infinity. Let's look at the next function. I have f of x equals absolute value of x. This is how it looks like. You need to identify them. Like once you see them, you know that this is an absolute value function. When you, you see it, you know it's a linear function. An absolute value function looks like a v like this. Okay. Now, again, let's discuss its domain. All values of x, well, all values of x are represented because this is going to extend forever in this way until it reaches infinity and on the other way until it reaches negative infinity. So the domain, again, is going to be from negative infinity until infinity. What about this function? Well, this function is f of x equals square root of x. We call this the square root function. Now, as we can see here, it starts from 0 and it extends to infinity. There are no negative values. You cannot have a negative value under the square root because the square root of a negative number will give you an imaginary number. It cannot be represented on the coordinate plane. So only positive numbers 
and 0 are allowed to be under the square root. So the domain, in this case, I'm going to just write D for abbreviation because we don't have much space. The domain here does not start from negative infinity. There are no negative numbers. It starts from 0 and extends, like this line will extend, that every number on the x-axis will have a representation on the graph until infinity. So this is the domain. Let's look at our next function, the quadratic function. It looks like a parabola like that. Well, the domain, again, of the quadratic function, which is f of x equal to x squared, starts from negative infinity until infinity. What about the cubic function? As you can see, it looks like that. Well, this extends and forever. There will, have been, there will be representations of negative numbers until negative infinity on the graph and also the positive infinity. So the domain, again, is from negative infinity to infinity. What about this function? This is a rational function. Sometimes they call it reciprocal function. This is the rational function in its simplest form. It's the parent function f of x equals 1 over x. You will notice something different about this function other than all the other functions. This function, its graph is not continuous, like the, it has two parts. It stops here, like it starts from negative infinity and goes down and stops here and never comes close to zero. Like it, it, could, it gets closer to zero, but never gets to zero and starts again from the top here and moves forever until it reaches infinity. It's a very strange function. Now, this function does not have a value of y when x is equal to 0. There is no representation of 0 when x is equal to 0 is never represented on the graph. Why? Because if I substitute for x here equal to 0, the whole value of the function will be undefined. We say that a function is undefined if you define, if you want to divide by 0. You cannot divide by 0. You'll get undefined. So you have all numbers are represented on this function, all real numbers, except for 0. So if I want to find its domain, you will find that the domain of this function starts from negative infinity, stops at 0. 0 is not here. So this is why we put parentheses, not brackets. If you see here, we put a bracket because 0 is represented. We don't put a bracket, we put parentheses because 0 is not represented, okay? So it's from negative infinity until 0, okay? 0 is not represented, and it continues after 0 until it gets to infinity. Now, if I'm saying before 0 and after 0, why am I writing 0? Because it could be at 0 0.1 or 0 0.00001. I can't write it. Now, 0 here is excluded. How do I know it's excluded? It's not part of the domain because I have parentheses, not brackets. Okay? So, again, all four functions we have seen here, the linear, absolute value, quadratic, and cubic. Cubic here can be a cubic function or any type of polynomial function. They all have the same rules. Starting from cubic function to the rest of the types of polynomial functions, they all have the same rules, same domain, same range, they transform the same way, everything. These four functions have the same domain, which is from negative infinity to infinity. While these two functions, the square root function and the rational functions, have a restricted domain. What do I mean by that? Like, the domain does not extend. It starts from zero, in the case of square root function, until infinity, and there are no negative numbers. You can't have a negative number under the square root. For the rational functions, all numbers are included except for 0, because 0 will make the function undefined. So far, we have only discussed the domain of functions. Now, what about the range? Now, the range is the representation on the y-axis here. Is there a point where y equal to 2 is represented on the graph? Yes, y is equal to 2 at the point 2 and 2. Is 1 represented on the graph? Yes. And as I move on, 3, 4, 5, and forever, all of them will be represented on the graph, also the negative sign. So the range of this function is, again, from negative infinity to infinity. So this is a very nice function, the linear function. It has a domain from negative infinity to infinity and the range also from negative infinity to infinity. Now let's look at our next function. 
What about the absolute value function? Well, absolute value function is different. Why? There are no negative numbers. Why aren't there any negative numbers? Because whatever inputs you're going to put in here, like if I say x is equal to negative 1, the absolute value of negative 1 is positive 1. The absolute value of negative 10 is positive 10. So always your output or the value of y is always going to be positive or 0. It's never going to be negative. So the range for the absolute value function starts from 0 and it ends at infinity. So it starts from 0 here and goes on forever until infinity. Now, the negative 1 is not represented on the graph, so it's not part of the range. y equals negative 2 is not, does not have a representation on the graph. Clear? Now, let's look at the range of this function. Well, the range of this function is the same as its domain. It starts from 0, and all values of y above 0 has a representation on the graph. So it is from 0 until infinity. What about this function? Again, there are no negative values. Why? Because if you square any number, the answer is going to be positive. If I put negative 1 here, like if I put negative 1 in the function, negative 1 squared gives you 1. So there is no value that you're going to square and get a negative number. So there is no negative values in this parent function. So again, the range, the output is never negative, is from 0 until infinity. What about this function? Well, the cubic function has positive values of y and negative values of y. Because negative 1 cubed is negative 1 here. When I have negative 1 as an input, the value of the output is negative 1. While 1 cubed, its outcome is 1. So there are positive representations and there are negative representations also for values of y. So the range of this function is all real numbers again from negative infinity to infinity. Now what about this function? Well, this function, its range in this case is the same like its domain. Its range is the same as its domain. All values are represented except for 0. I can't divide 1 by any number and get 0. There is no way. What number can you like? I can divide 1 by 1, I'll get 1. If I divide 1 by 0, I'll get undefined. If I divide 1 by 2, I'll get half. I can't divide 1 by any number, and the answer will be 0. So the output for this function is never 0. So the range of the function is the same as the domain of the function from negative infinity to 0, union 0 to infinity. Now, so far, we have spoken only about parent functions, the domain and range of each of them. Now, if we go into shifting, the video is going to be too long, so I'm going to stop here and make another video about shifting functions. We will discuss what will happen to the domain and the range in that case, and we will discuss different types of functions, how they, their graphs will be affected by the shift. I hope this has been helpful for you, and thank you so much for watching.